and welcome to another Cheeky Girl Creations video. So today I'm sharing with you the process of me doing a mixed media canvas for my grandmother's birthday. So I did this a couple weeks back and I'm just starting off with sketching a silhouette of a woman with an afro. I wanted to go with like an afro because my gran had this super huge afro when um, she was younger and I just wanted to kind of have that. Um, on a canvas. So I'm just using a mechanical pencil on a basic stretch canvas. I think this is around A3 size. Um, I can't remember exactly but I think it's A3 and I'm just using a plain old rubber. Um, if I was sketching on like watercolor paper or just paper in general I would use a uh, putty rubber or a kneadable eraser but when I'm sketching on canvas I tend to sketch like pretty dark I just use a regular eraser and sometimes I use a large um, kind of natural hair brush to kind of brush away the eraser shavings but as you can see there I used a vacuum a mini vacuum to vacuum up all the excess eraser shavings um, so yeah very simple sketching process and because I'll be using acrylics and like other mixed media techniques I didn't bother to lighten the sketch uh, so yeah oh and I do start quite lightly but I just kind of started the video from when the camera could pick up the sketch so I'm using a variety of like papers book paper deco paper like papers that like kind of pattern paper I've made myself using like jelly printing techniques or just putting paint on like paper when I just had some excess left over on my palette and yeah just kind of random papers all in this very orangey yellowy theme her favorite color is orange so I wanted to stick to that so it would like fit with her decor um, and I'm just using PVA glue, just some basic white glue to stick it down as well as a palette knife. I like to use a palette knife to stick things down because um, I find it's just, it's a bit cleaner than a brush. I don't have to worry about ruining a brush and I find I'm able to kind of squish out any air pockets a lot easier with a palette knife than say with a brush. So yeah, I just prefer doing that but you know, if you're following along with this video you can use anything really. And as you can see, I'm just making sure to stay clear of the silhouette and I'm just layering up until I'm happy with it. Now, I didn't stick any paper on the sides of the canvas just because I'm not a fan of having to like kind of fold over paper over the sides. I've realized like over the years, I just find it's just a little bit more difficult than it's worth really. So in a little bit, I will be sticking down some tissue paper. Oh, and I do add some spray, some orange spray, a couple times throughout the process. Now, this spray is just made from food coloring, so it's not, what's the word, it's not permanent. So you will see it run whenever I go in and add more, like, details as I'm, like, putting in these doilies, like some paper doilies you see it kind of picking up the orange color because it doesn't dry permanent it's just food coloring and water um nice and simple and i did stick some of those doily like paper doilies kind of around the edge just because it was a bit thinner um yeah so when it comes to sticking paper around the edge tissue paper or any kind of thin paper i tend to fold over so i did that with the tissue paper as i'm doing now now with the tissue paper it is best to use um a brush to stick it down but because just the palette knife can end up tearing it a little bit but I don't mind that too much I'm going for texture anyway so it doesn't really matter to me if it tears but if you want it to be a little bit more like uniformed maybe use a brush instead and um, I'm just using this kind of like pinky ready paper and some yellow tissue paper I couldn't find any orange which is kind of strange and I'm do going over with the tissue paper now because the other papers would have covered up the texture of the tissue paper and the tissue paper is um, slightly see-through so it kind of you can you can see the papers underneath which is really nice you could get some some of that like visual texture so um, and with the tissue paper just because it's a little bit more like man manual I can get a little bit closer up to the silhouette than before and when I was sticking down the tissue paper I tend to like to use like a runny PVA glue but I don't have any like pre-mix so I was just spraying the canvas just to make the PVA glue a little bit thinner 
um, just with some water. And then again, I go back over with um, the orange spray and I kind of rub it in on places around the sides just to spread that color around. And you can get a quick look. And those sparkly bits, I put um, some gold paper from Crowns, from the Christmas crackers that we had um, last year. So just to have some kind of shine, but actually that doesn't show through at all by the time I go over with paint. Um, that's one of the things with mixed media. Layers, layers, and more layers. So... After this, I am going to prime it. Now, I'm using some clear chalk primer made by myself, and it smelled a bit strange. Um, it, it looked fine, though, so I just put, like, a couple, like, a tablespoon, I think, of just some mentholated spirits or just plain old alcohol, and um, to hopefully kill off anything that might have been growing, but I couldn't see anything grow, so it seems fine. Um, and I just gave it a good mix, and the paintbrush I'm using is... A paintbrush that you would use to maybe like paint your shed with. It's one of those kind of plasticky brushes and I like to use those to deal with any like mediums like clear chalk primer, chalk primer. So I don't ruin my good brushes and I went all over the canvas, the sides as well and I did that just to seal in any pigments from either the paper or that spray that could then come through when I'm painting. I wanted to just seal this layer um, which is why I went over with the uh, clear chalk primer. And now I'm adding some texture paste, again, made by myself. I like to make texture paste, chalk primer, and clear chalk primer. Um, it has a really nice texture, so it's nice and easy to make myself. If you guys would actually like me to make a video about that, let me know in the comments below, and I'll happily do like a video how I make some of my mediums. And I just use some sequin paste, stencil through that, again, using a palette knife. Um, by now, I was using a metal one, because I think my plastic one broke while I was doing this, actually. And I just let that air dry, like, overnight, so that when I go into the paint, nothing will move, so the textures will still stay there. So the first layer of paint is a very watery layer. I wanted to, like, put down a layer of color, but without covering any everything. So I'm starting off with yellow. I just do a very, l like, light wash of it, and then I go in with some red, and then some orange. The, all the like the materials and like colors I use will be listed down below so if you're curious you can check that out and again I'm just using that brush I was using earlier it was out and it's a nice size I think it's like an inch two inches maybe around there and again that brush size will also be down in the description below so if you're curious about anything all the materials are down below and yeah, I just kept on spraying um, with my, just some plain water and just letting that all run down, create its own texture and just cover that with a nice layer of paint just to make it look a bit more uniform because it was kind of looking all over the place with all the, that paper. And I made sure to get the sides as well when I was doing this because some of the paper and some of the texture paste went on the sides, but I really, I do like to have my sides painted so that whenever if someone buys a canvas or I gift a canvas the person doesn't have to worry about framing it it already looks nice unframed so I just like to have that as an option for people and I also like the look as well and now I'm going in with some white now it just felt I don't know it just felt really flat and I just felt like I needed to just add a little something so I changed brushes to this like softer synthetic brush just so I would have a little bit more control because it's a bit smaller and I'm just going in and adding this white now when I was adding it at first I went in lightly but I wasn't really liking that so I just was kind of adding globs spraying it which is why you can see all that dripping and adding globs again and when I left that to dry overnight I came back and it had this like lovely kind of crackly texture and I actually I was quite ill when I was filming this actually, I was fighting a cold, so I forgot to like film a close-up, but there will be close-up photos at the end of the video, which you can see, so you can kind of see that texture I'm talking about, and because I really like the way the texture formed, I think what happened was, because the paint was so wet, it just ended up kind of separating, like the pigments or something separated or the binding so that I could see some of the stuff like underneath and I really like the way it looked 
and so I decided to just do that with all my other like layers of paint which meant that every time I did it because the canvas was then sopping like I sprayed a lot you can see all those drips which is why I actually have some scrap paper underneath my canvas because I didn't want to um, ruin my easel some paint in the easel wouldn't be bad for it though it would just look a bit messy and I didn't want that to happen so um, I just had some paper to catch it and then when the canvas dried a little bit I would then do the bottom so it would look uniform and the reason I'm doing this on an easel is because it's so large I cannot fit the canvas on my table um, uh, in a profile kind of setting yeah um so yeah so I just continued to do that with all my other paint gloves so I would start off with a kind of thinnish layer of paint then I would spray it then I would go in with some like thicker layers spray that and go in maybe with a little bit like more watered down paint spray that and just leave it to dry and most of the time I left it to dry flat yeah I left it to dry flat so that it wouldn't continue like I didn't want it to drift down the canvas while it was drying and then hopefully it would separate nicely and it worked really well so I also did that with the orange with the red um, and just letting it all drip over was really nice and I'm sure you're probably wondering why I'm letting it all drip over the silhouette I'm going to paint over that so I wasn't worried about the silhouette what you just saw me do is I would just dab up the drips just so I wouldn't have too much color to cover up um, and I wouldn't lose too much of the definition of the um, of the silhouette so I would just dab that up with some paper towel and yeah I really like the effect on that I would actually I think I would like to try that again on like a smaller piece and just kind of play around with it because I think it would look really cool and then when I did that with the red I found the red a little bit too striking so I did actually go in with I think a kind of like orange mixed with some white and red or something and again just added the globs I just continued to use the same colors so that it would look um, so it would it it wouldn't like the colors wouldn't fight each other it would look nice and cohesive if I just continue to use those same four colors well yellow red orange and then white so three colors and then white um, and yeah and I really like the look of it and so it's a very warm canvas I tend to go with cooler colors so it's always nice to have that challenge of just using like the warmer colors so you can see me adding that um, lighter orange to go over the red just so it wouldn't be so I found it found it was taking away from the orange and then I liked how it looked but I did want um, kind of the colors to come back a little bit well the colors to be a little bit more separated I found it was looking kind of dark once I added because I also went in and added some like yellow over the red just kind of mix and get that orangey look so I do then go over with another layer of the white and I just go over where the white areas were so I wanted some I wanted to see the white drips again I thought that would be a nice way to just kind of lighten the piece and um, just kind of separate things a little bit so I did do that once it was dry and um, yeah so that's pretty much the background done and it looks really nice like especially close up oh and I also went in with some gold as well I forgot about that I like to add like shiny elements especially gold so I went in with some gold thought it would like just work well with the warm palette anyways and I did the same dropping effect but because the goal is a little bit more transparent it's not as it's not as like easy to spot which is kind of nice so it's only when like you kind of tip it you see the gold and especially since it's so watered down like you know all the lovely like gold elements kind of like drift down and it looks really cool um yes yeah, so after I did that it was time to fix up the silhouette so as you can see the silhouette is covered in drips so I went in with chalk primer I had to do two layers um, so I have like a bit of me doing the first layer and then a bit of me doing the second layer just so you can see what it looked like with one layer and the chalk primer the chalk primer is like gesso if you know what gesso is that's an acrylic primer so the chalk primer is like gesso it's just got a chalkier texture ie the name and um, yeah I went over again I grabbed my big brush and I went over um, this was like it was a perfect time to also kind of fix up the silhouette if things kind of got like covered up 
and I went over with two layers. The two layers were sufficient enough. I did have to go in with another layer, but I'll talk about that afterwards. Um, that was pretty much a fault of my own, to be honest. Um, but yeah, so I went in with one layer. I let it dry completely so that because I find if I go over the chalk primer again and disrupt it while it's trying to dry, it ends up kind of like gross and lumpy so I made sure and let it dry for until not only was it touch dry but like when I touched it it was like it didn't feel cold because sometimes when it feels cold it means that it may not be completely dry yet um and yeah so I and when I was painting the, each section I kind of changed the direction of my brush strokes so that I could I wouldn't struggle too much to find the outlines when I had to go in and add details and you're probably seeing that around now and you can see how it looks with just one layer and then um, with the second layer it looks a lot nicer and especially because it is a primer um, it gives a good surface to then go over with a second layer of chalk primer but if you don't have gesso or any other kind of primer and you're kind of following along with this video you can just use um, acrylic paint just white acrylic paint it's just it will probably take a couple more layers so now I'm going in with the outlines I used um, some brown paint that I think I kind of mixed up with like the red I can't remember the process exactly but I think I mixed with some of the red maybe some of the orange and possibly a little no I didn't add any blue I wanted it to be very warm so I just mixed it with the other colors just so it would like be a little bit more cohesive um, so it wouldn't look like I was just chucking on another color and I'm just using a rigor brush and I'm outlining everything like kind of adding some details um, not all of this is in the video because my head kept on getting in the way so I apologize for that um, so yeah, but I just added any details, any outlines that I needed to, and then once I finished like going around the silhouette, I, with the silhouette, because I had to have the paint kind of watered down so it would move smoothly, I did have to go in with like a couple layers just to make sure it would stand out nicely. I then added some um, very thin outlines to some of the paint spots, um, just to... I just wanted to bring that brown into the background so it wouldn't just it wouldn't stand out in a bad way it would stand out in a good way and then once I did that I also added some splashes but I wasn't able to protect the silhouette very well so I had to then go in and add more chalk primer to add um, to cover up those splashes um, but that was pretty much it after that it was all done so so yeah, that's that's it actually. Um, it's a pretty simple process. It just took a while. Mostly the drying time takes a while just because of that very wet technique. But um, yeah, I really like how it turned out. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Have you ever done anything like this? Um, yeah, it was really fun to do and I really like that background technique. I'll definitely have to do that again because I had no idea I could do that. So it's always fun when you like have those happy accidents when you're creating. And yeah, so... Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please do give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I upload a new video every Friday, so please do click that notification bell so you don't miss it. I have a podcast at the beginning of the month, a monthly vlog at the end, and then a couple process videos in the middle. And oh, and I also wanted to let you guys know that the March rewards for Patreon on the Snake tier are available now um there are blank bullet journal printables or downloadable should i say as well as a coloring page and there's a couple months to check that out in the link below or in an icard and i will have a photo up an example somewhere on the screen or at the end of the if you want to just kind of have a quick sneak peek what the uh rewards look like and yeah, I think that's it. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Please, again, let me know what you think in the comments below. I hope the video wasn't too long. Let me know. Um, I'm still kind of trying to figure out how I want my videos. I'm still trying to get into the groove of making videos again. So let me know if this video was a bit too long or if it was just the right length. And yeah, I will see you guys next week for another video. Thanks for watching. Bye.